this is uh, without a flash. I'm recording, taking pictures of a blue diamond crystal that I have been working on. Mm. And, and there's the light coming up through the center. And here is the Z axis. So the thing about uh, those little things De Beers calls diamonds, um, that they're very pretty, you know, sparkly and everything, but you don't get the full effect of, <laughs> of what they do. And this Z axis is where the X and Y axis cross. Okay, so there are planes of cleavage going parallel to that, those two lines forming an X. And they, they pass through the whole stone. Because okay, this is a molecule of carbon. It is a single molecule of carbon. It is a crystalline structure made entirely of carbon. And carbon atoms got squished together so tightly that they can share their outer valence electrons with each other. They have four. And when they share, they, that makes a total of eight for two, and eight is the uh, magic number for stability in our universe. All chemistry uh, is driven by this, uh, by the number of electrons in the outer valence orbit. That's what, how they interact with each other the pressure that diamonds form under pushes those atoms so closely together they can share those four electrons in their outer valence orbit. And that is why diamonds are so very, very hard, because that's forms a double, double covalent bond. And so dar diamonds are the hardest naturally occurring substance on Earth. And in, as far as I know, maybe the whole universe. Um, because that, uh, that ability to get squished together it, they share it with silicon, which also has four electrons in the outer valence orbit. And so we get silicon carbide. And silicon carbide uh, is also extremely hard. It is 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness because the silicon and carbon form a double-double covalent bond. And that closeness and the sharing of those outer valence electrons is what makes diamonds so very, very clear also. Because when light hits them, 
those electrons go up one notch, one quantum. And they stay there because of this double-double uh, uh, covalent bond. And it allows them to stay where they, in that upper energy range, and it lets light pass right through it that way. If the electrons drop back down to their normal standard state, it would be opaque. That's what happens with this metallic aluminum here. Right? And the light hits it and, and it bounces off, right? But the, the shiny stuff is, is uh, the aluminum electrons giving off uh, um, that quantum of energy given to it by light bouncing off of it. So the, the reflection stuff on, on metals are caused by this, uh, this effect. It's the photoelectric effect is what it's called. And um, it's kind of the, the foundation of Richard Feynman's uh, um, quantum electrodynamics. Um, and so when I'm looking at these uh, diamonds, it helps me um, see the way light acts in the universe. It, it's not just pretty rocks for me. It, it, there's something fundamental about the universe hidden in these diamond crystals. and the way they deal with light. Pretty sure that that's the way they make spaceships go. Right here, I mean, these diamond crystals are... Um, special? Amazing? I don't know. But they're not very rare, really. They're not very rare. Uh, the, they're rare. Kimberlite pipes are rare. And where De Beers gets their diamonds is Kimberlite pipes. Um, we get our diamonds from fault lines like the Gila River or the Amazon River or the Ganges River. And uh, the, those big fault lines, that's what they are, produce diamonds uh, in by the ton. <laughs> They're not rare at all. Just nobody looked, nobody measured, nobody, and people called it amethyst, this stuff, right? It's not amethyst, man. First of all, the very, very first thing is quartz does not have planes of cleavage. So uh, <laughs> it can't possibly be an amethyst. And the other stuff it does with light is because of this double-double covalent bond. I am investigating.